Hey, welcome back, Ash Shield, things and I have a cast that is wrapped in tin foil, making a dual laminate bruxism splint. And I'm, I, one of the, the company suggests that to ensure that you have a nice, clear bruxism splint, contrary to, in comparison to this, which didn't, I didn't use the tin foil on the cast when I did the vacuum forming. Uh, you wrap it like a baked potato in tin foil and although this is difficult to get out of the bruxism splint after you vacuum form it it makes a huge difference in the clarity of the prostheses so what i'm doing is i'm just burnishing with my fingers uh, there's an edential space here make sure that you, i did one of these already and i had if i didn't if you don't burnish it all the way down to the edentulous ridge and just sort of leave a seam you'll get you'll actually get a seam and I'll show you a picture of that later so this seems to be almost ready not close so we'll place that up there and we'll do the vacuum for me all right so the material is just about ready to be formed you can see that all the little air bubbles. Now the company suggests air drying this at 80 degrees for 40 minutes or for four hours to eliminate those air bubbles. So bring this across. And you can see it being formed. And we'll let that cool and then we're gonna trim. One of the other methods of removing the bubbles is also increasing perhaps the plasticity of the material just to let it form a little bit better under pressure. Okay, we're gonna evacuate the chamber now. Oh, well, that's not it. There we go. there we have it so that's definitely a couple points you can see how, how clear the material is now relative to the other one that I've fabricated right here you can see the, the difference in clarity and also uh, because I let it plasticize a little bit longer uh, ie get warmer it removed all the air bubbles which it's hard to see in this, but there are a number of air bubbles and I didn't let this set long enough. So those are a couple key points. And now I'm just gonna remove the tin foil and carry down the same row as the other one. Okay, so now what I'm doing is removing the, the cast and actually the, now the is splint from the, the mold itself. Uh, there's two, there's a number, I mean, there's probably a thousand ways you can do this. I'm using the electric knife uh, you can also use separating disc on the dental lathe. However, over the holidays, someone has stolen the mandrel or misplaced it, so I have no idea where that was. And this is a really fast way of doing it. The problem with using this is that if you want to uh, preserve the cast, you're not going to do it with this. This will section right through the cast pretty quick if you're not careful. So we're just going to uh, remove this. Oh, if I did it properly, there we go. This is still, you're still gonna cause some destruction to the cast by doing it with the electric knife, but less. Okay, so that's what we're left with. And normally what we're gonna do now is mount it, or it should be, you know, you can already have this mounted, take this off and mount the cast. Um, what I've already done is I've articulated the cast and now I'm going to place, I will take this and place it on the cast and build up my occlusal portion with acrylic because remember that uh, the whole purpose of the dual laminate is that you can add, you've got a soft and tagged surface, let's just take this off now, soft and tagged surface and a hard acrylic uh, occlusal surface, cameo surface 
to which you can add ortho acrylic, which I will. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel away the tin foil from the inside of this cast. Is it ever tight? Okay, so there's the inside of the tin foil. And there's probably a really fast way of doing this, but I definitely do not know it. So I'm just going to slowly peel that away, and you can see how clear it is compared to the other one. So I definitely recommend doing this technique. 